Hello and welcome back to About Tonight. I'm Laura Davis. My first guest is Alan Sandell from the Greens. She's the first uh, Greens senator to be elected in the lower house. She likes bike riding, science, scuba diving. Uh, she dislikes tunnels to the airport, uh, climate change and running for the tram. I don't know if she really doesn't like running for the tram. I just assume nobody does. Uh, so please welcome my first guest, Alan Sandell. <laughs> Do we have to make a sit in a little box? So please come and sit in a much better chair. Um, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. Good morning. We're pretending it's the night, but it's oh, uh, yeah. Very so dark, uh, we're supposed to look uh, more awake, I guess, than we are. Maybe. <laughs> um, uh, what have you been doing lately? Well, I had a couple of weeks off over summer. I went nice. to Tassie. I went hiking. Went to the Tarkine. It was beautiful. What did What did you hike? Um, I hiked a place called the Walls of Jerusalem. And it was 18 degrees on the first day. And so I thought, you don't need to bring your beanie or your gloves no. or anything. Next day, minus five. Whoa, so how long did you hike for? Three In days. Minus five <laughs> yeah. with not even a beanie. Yeah, it was pretty ridiculous. Oh man, that's But no now good. I'm back, now I'm back and I've got my new office and it's pretty hectic. Lots of people coming in and asking us to get them out of their parking fines and such things, <laughs> which we can't do, but we, we can help them with other things. So, so how do you segue from that when they go, please help me with my parking fine? Well, look, you know, here's the appeal process if you feel like you've been hard done by, but we unfortunately don't have the power to get people out of parking fines. They should give you some powers. It would be nice, yeah, wouldn't it? I think <laughs> so. So good. I've been uh, looking up on your website and you've got a list of amazing like, outdoorsy hobbies, which <laughs> I really appreciated. Uh, my favourite was uh, scuba diving. Yes. You, you're an avid scuba diver. I love scuba diving. And When did you get into it? Um, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or so. My boyfriend was really into it at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we went on a trip to Thailand or something and I got my license and it's beautiful in Thailand. You just, you don't even have to wear a wetsuit. You just wear your bathers. There's all this beautiful what about stuff sharks? to see. Well, and they've got these beautiful sharks in Thailand that are these just little reef sharks and they're really cute and they're not harmful at all. And so I just thought scuba diving was the best thing ever. And then you come back to Victoria and he's like, let's go scuba diving in the bay. It's freaking freezing and you have to wear this like massive wetsuit with a hood and everything. But I still love it. That's pretty fun. What's mm. the best thing you've ever seen? Um, I don't know. I really like the little things yeah. like little seahorses and the weedy sea dragon is this little seahorse. Yes in yeah. Victoria that's got all these bits coming off it to try and go like, I'm not a seahorse, I'm a piece of seaweed. The like, interesting thing about anyone. those is actually that they mate for life. Um, so, you know, they find each other, fall in seahorse, seaweedy love. Aww. And then like if one of them kind of floats away or dies, the other seahorse never takes that's another. That's a terrible, tragic story. I think it's because they, they would kind of swim around just going, ah, oh, that seaweed reminds me of Enid. Yeah. Aww. Like they all look the same. <laughs> yeah. It would be very hard to find another seahorse. Yeah. I think you would just you would just find something that wasn't seaweed yeah. and hold on to it forever. <laughs> um, tell really me, sad. with scuba diving, have you made a lot of friends scuba diving? Um, look, it's a bit hard to make friends underwater. Exactly. There's not a lot of communication. You can kind of do the signs like, OK, or help me, I don't have any air left, and things like that. But when yeah. I was a teenager, I didn't have any friends, which is why I'm a stand-up oh, okay. comedian now. Uh, so my mother uh, wanted me to start scuba diving to make friends, mm, and I told her that you wouldn't because you would be underwater. So I would like, yeah. uh, I would like a, a public uh, notification that you can't <laughs> make friends make, can't while make scuba friends diving. While scuba diving. Well, maybe you could make friends with the weedy sea dragon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Little Mermaid style. And I'd be your friend for life. Congratulations on your win in Thank November. Uh, I was going to ask, why do you think that the uh, Greens campaign was so markedly successful this election? Um, it's an interesting question. I think partly because we've got Adam Bant, who's mm -hmm. our Greens MP at a federal level in Melbourne, and he's really popular. He's done a lot of great work for the community, both advocating for those bigger issues like action on climate change, but also helping people with day-to-day -day local yeah. issues, like if they've got a housing problem or a visa problem, things like that. So I think that, that they've seen that the Greens have a track record and I think they're just sick of the, the old parties who weren't really offering anything and yeah. neither Labor nor Liberals said anything about the environment, neither of them really had a plan for public transport. They probably don't even know what a weedy sea dragon yeah, is. Yeah, that's right. So an action on climate change, neither of them had a plan. So I think people were a bit sick of those two just being quite similar and not offering a vision and they saw that the Greens had a better vision. That's really great. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm from Perth, 
and I, I've been here maybe 18 months now mm. and I love it. What do you think makes Melbourne such a, such a livable city, mm. the, the most livable city, some people have said? Well, it's not Perth. <laughs> no, <laughs> I love Perth. It's lovely, lovely beaches. Probably great weedy sea dragons. You can go, you can go yeah. looking whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> Giant sharks, yeah. apparently. Well, the Luxor, maybe. Mm -hmm. Excellent Luxor. I have to say I'm a bit of a Luxor aficionado. So I've done a bit of a Luxor tour of Melbourne and I can okay. give you some tips if yeah. you need them. And, oh, mm. look, I just think it's got such a good community. Each suburb's got its own little character. Um, people, maybe people say because it's the cold weather, but people are yeah. forced to get into things like the arts or sport or community. And it's just, you know, it's such a lovely community in Melbourne, but you know, there's things we need to improve as well. Okay, what do you think that Melbourne needs to improve on? Well, transport for one. Okay. I don't know if you've ever been to somewhere like Berlin where the trains go every two minutes. You don't even have to look at the timetable. They're always on time. Even places like Bangkok, Tokyo, okay. they've just got world-class public transport networks and you can just leave your car at home. Mm -hmm. And we're not really there yet, I think, with Melbourne. It might mm -hmm. be better than some places. Yeah, yeah, but, definitely. Um, and maybe it's the best in Australia, but if you go to places like Europe or North America where they just have fantastic public transport networks, you really see what you're missing out on. Yeah, so what do you think needs to change? Oh, so many things. Okay. I mean, we fought against the East-West Toll Road mm -hmm. um, because we think that that money could go into public transport instead. So we need a few more rail lines, so out to Doncaster in the mm -hmm. east where they don't have one. We need more trams, better tram links, particularly east-west across the city. Where yeah, definitely. There's lots north-south and into the city, but very few across the city. I live in Kensington. It's even hard to get from, yeah. say, Kensington to Fitzroy. Definitely. Even though it's in the inner city. Yeah, I, I'm in Fitzroy and to get to even Brunswick. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's an hour walk. Yeah, and it's and that's the quickest way to get there yeah. is to walk or yeah. I ride my bike. So, yeah, I think the transport is definitely one thing we need to improve a lot in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. mm. That's pretty good. And also things like housing. So if you look at some European cities that are comparable, people do live in apartments in North mm. America as well, but they're often really good quality apartments. You can have family-sized apartments that are really well insulated yeah. and have great windows, things like that. Whereas here, a lot of our apartments are really small, one bedroom, yeah, no and natural very light. expensive. Yeah, and still very expensive. And so if we actually want to deal with the housing crisis that we mm. have at the moment, we need to be building apartments that are actually good for people to live in throughout their whole life, even when they're having families, exactly. not just for students, for example. Exactly. Mm. And um, I think too, there's some, there's some kind of uh, evolutionary issues with living in places that are too small and a lot of um, kind of housing uh, commissions and stuff kind of work on mm. trying to fit as many as you can in, but it's actually not a healthy way to, mm. to live. Um, yeah. it's, it's okay to have um, high density in some mm. situations and particularly with, say, the public housing flats, a lot of people they, um, it's good to live close to services and so you don't want to push people into houses in the outer no. suburbs but that housing needs to be good quality, yeah. needs to be well maintained, needs to have natural light and insulation and at the moment um, I've been to visit some public housing estates with some of my local residents and there's rats and cockroaches and they're not treated very yeah, well by the housing okay. department and yeah it's not all right. So maybe like maybe like a minimum square footage and, and yeah. proper insulation stuff like that helps yeah, that's a lot. Right. Um, we wanted to, to talk to you while you're here uh, about uh, like community television because we mm. know that the uh, government at the moment is uh, selling the station that we are currently sitting on. Mm. Um, how, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think community television and also community radio and other ki kinds of media is so important. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing at the moment that a lot of our media is owned by people like Rupert Murdoch. And you know, whatever you think of Rupert yeah, Murdoch, it's definitely. probably not a good idea to have all your media owned by one person with one particular worldview. Mm. And so community TV and radio is so important. And we saw last year before the budget that there were a lot of threats to community radio. Yeah. And their sector really got together and ad advocated very strongly and those cuts didn't happen in mm. the end. So uh, I think it's really disappointing that the government's looking to sell the, the TV station and maybe we need a bit of advocacy that I could help with to try think, and force their hand. I think one of the main points to, um, to make on it too is that, well, there's, there's two. One is that uh, the, the station isn't funded by the government, mm. it's just that the station is owned Provided, by yeah. it, so it's not costing them anything except mm. in what they would make to sell it. Mm. Uh, and, and secondly, by pushing it to a digital medium on the internet, um, kind of disregards the fact that a lot of the communities uh, and demographics best represented on community television don't have access right. to internet in their homes. Mm. So kind of the, 
the time that they might spend watching TV, making dinner, uh, you know, is replaced by whatever is on mm. commercial television yeah, that's and, right. you know, doesn't necessarily re represent mm. their voices. Yeah, and here in Melbourne we're so lucky to have Channel 31 because so many of our comedians or TV presenters yeah. and artists got their start here and so it's not only um, really great for you know the people who are consuming it and the people who are represented on the TV but also as a training ground as well so it actually provides a lot of different services. Yeah definitely, mm. definitely there's a lot of people working right here they're really great. Yeah. Um, Hi. Yeah. <laughs> I asked if you could um, bring your show and tell yeah. in I thought that might be fun to have a see. Yeah, what have I, you brought for us? Well I failed a little bit I have okay. to say I wanted to bring my scuba mask because ah. I just am so attached to it and it's my favourite thing that I own and I take it everywhere I go travelling, even if you have to hire all the gear, I always have my own mask. But um, I remembered that I had actually left it at my parents' um, place down the coast, <laughs> and so I didn't bring it, but instead okay. I brought my helmet, which is kind of lame, but I'm also very attached to my helmet. It's got yeah. a few scratches on it. Um, I ride everywhere in Melbourne. Yeah, I read that you ride to, to Parliament I now, do ride to Parliament, great. and I got boxed in a little bit by the media, which was um, a bit silly of me, but on the very first day after I was elected, the media said, will you be taking a government car? And I said, oh, no, no, I'll be, I'll be riding my bike to Parliament because that's, I've always Not had. Not if you want to go east or west. Yeah, and then, um, so now it's been, then it was all over, all the papers, so now there's no way I can ever take a government car <laughs> <laughs> to ride my bike everywhere and in these can heels and this Can you take a government bike? Is that an option? Well, that's what I wanted to know. I said, yeah. well, Maybe I should get free bike servicing or yeah, something like so. that. Yeah, I think so. If my yeah. tax dollars went towards bicycle get free repair, car I'd be fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, this is a very handy little thing. Have you ever come off? Um, a couple of times, but never too badly. You had, you had your old buddy. Yeah, I had my old buddy and I'm a pretty conservative rider and I ride in dresses and heels and things, so I'm, I don't go too fast. I just started learning, like, I, I know physically how to ride a bicycle, mm. but I started riding maybe six months ago. And I, I really recommend uh, avoiding something until you're an adult so you get the full <laughs> joy of experiencing it when you're conscious. Like, yeah. if I'd learned how to do it when I was six, I wouldn't have been like, oh, I'm riding a, yeah. a bicycle. But as, as a 26-year-old woman, it's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. It's so much fun. Well, thank you so much, Ellen, for coming in and having a chat with me on About Tonight. Is there anything else you wanted to, to add or, or check um, in on? Oh, just that people can come to my office anytime. That's and, pretty nice. And, um, Compl you know, not complain about parking fines. <laughs> Maybe not, but we can help them with other government services and exactly. issues that they have. Well, thank you so much, Ellen, for coming in. We're going to throw to a break. Um, we've got excellent guests coming up on About Tonight. We've got Ben McKenzie and Women's. I'm Laura Davis. We'll see you in a bit.